By 27, I felt pretty clearly defined. I knew who I was. I was a smart young professional who always made wise relationship choices. I imagined life as a trek up a steep mountain towards success, and the safest way to reach the top was to hew closely to a well-traveled path. Having followed one of these paths, at this time, I was a new attorney living in Boston with a very nice boyfriend and beginning discussions about marriage. That was the next stop on my path, followed by a house and some children. Aside from a few teenage detours, I stayed on this path and it had served me pretty well. Then one evening, I had a meeting with a new witness on a domestic violence case. I greeted her at reception with a firm handshake and direct eye contact. I felt immediately stopped by the impossible softness of her hand. It felt so tiny and delicate in mine. And the absolute blackness of her eyes, she had eyes without pupils, like endless pools. I wanted to fall into them. I recovered quickly and directed her toward the conference room. Her perfume lingered in the air behind her. She smelled amazing. I wanted to be closer to her. I wanted to press my face against her neck. Instead, I offered her a seat and I took my own. We started with small talk. Could I ask her the name of her perfume? That has to be a question women sometimes ask each other. I didn't risk it. Instead, we talked about the weather and the traffic and soon we were discussing the qualities of perfectly cooked rice. I hadn't met many people who could hold a conversation on rice. Eventually, we got to the purpose of our meeting. She worked for a nonprofit, helping newly immigrated women in the community. And one of those women was my client. She had been suggested as a witness for this case, that she would be a terrible witness. She only knew hearsay. She could only testify to a few minor facts. At the end of our meeting, I said, we should schedule another meeting just in case we need to prepare you for trial. I was going to see her again. I walked home that night thinking about the absolute blackness of her eyes and the softness of her skin and her delightful black curls, particularly one little ringlet that bounced just over her right eye. I mapped out the rest of our lives together. And at home, I laid down wondering if I ever knew myself. I placed two pillows between my body and that of my boyfriend. We'd been living together for a few years at this point. He'd asked me to marry him because it would make good financial sense, but I suggested we wait for a better reason. Now I closed my eyes beside him as my brain buzzed with new connections and retrieved memories for viewing beneath a new lens. Like the first time I saw a Hawaiian Tropic commercial, it was a tanning oil commercial in the 80s. I should have known right then. I had never experienced this before, but I knew what this feeling was. I'd watched movies about it, read books about it. My friends were always in and out of it. By 27, I assumed I already understood it pretty well. I talked about men with my girlfriends. Don't naked men kind of look like frogs? 
they'd say things like, they do. Men look so weird. Men are so lucky we love them. Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought we all just felt that way, kind of feel about guys, but we still liked them. And one day I'd magically fall in love with one. I'd had plenty of relationships. As a young woman, I felt overwhelmed by men. Dating one was the easiest way to get the rest of them to leave me alone. So I chose funny, conventionally attractive men and I dated them until I just couldn't anymore. I always found myself coming back to the question, what makes a person leave the realm of friend or boyfriend and become family? Was that something I would just know when I fell in love? Was this love even something real or did we just make our best option work? Now I wondered, is this how my boyfriend feels about me? Was he always rambling about the softness of, her hand, of my hands because my hands feel to him the way her hands feel to me? If a man had felt this way about me, then I'd probably been pretty cool to him. I thought about all these things while my boyfriend slept in happy ignorance, never questioning my little pillow wall. In the morning, I awoke a pragmatist. My boyfriend and I exited our brownstone apartment and walked across the common where we would part ways for work. Love you. Love you. One meeting with one person can't be the sort of thing that changes an entire future, an identity, not in real life. Maybe this didn't mean anything. It probably didn't mean anything. I had 27 years of presumed and apparent heterosexuality. It couldn't be more than 5% of the population that identifies as gay. It was just too unlikely that this was really something I needed to be concerned about. It was probably just some sort of pheromone thing, nothing to upset a whole life over. I told myself this and tried hard to believe it. I went to my boyfriend's office party. Two drinks in, I texted her. Come to this party. We have old school arcade games and the rock band stage is ridiculous. She arrived, two drinks in as well. For the rest of the night, it was just me, her, Mortal Kombat, and an open bar. Her skin felt like warm caramel. We drank too much. We leaned against large, cold glass window panes, forehead to forehead, nose to nose, in silence. We just barely avoided crossing any definite lines, but our thoughts could be read by anyone who looked our way. Maybe I should have felt worried or ashamed, but at that moment, I just knew this was how my life was meant to be. And any consequences that followed were just a part of my fate. I'd never asked anyone on a date in my life. Let me see you tomorrow. Oysters and wine at Boucher. I went home with my boyfriend and laid down on my side of the pillow wall. I thought about everything I ever expected my life to be. Hotshot attorney, trophy wife, super mom. 
Could I trade that in for sexual deviance, partially recognized marriage, poor adoption prospects? I had walked this path for 27 years. Surely I could continue, couldn't I? I desperately wanted two things that could not coexist. I told myself, maybe if I spend more time with her, I'll get bored of her or immune to her pheromones. It didn't work. My boyfriend and I broke up. I felt like I was free falling. My life felt unstable, unknown, and unknowable. We burned cash on extravagant nightly dates. We had standing tables at Boucher and the Four Seasons. And she moved to New York. I felt like a piece of me was missing. I knew time would run its course, it always does. Surely that piece would heal. It didn't. She moved back. A year later, we got married. And then we bought a condo and then we had a baby. When I first met her, I loved her more than I knew was possible. And today I can say that I was still just scratching the surface of what love can be. The safety of that well-traveled path could not compete with the life that was waiting for me on my own path. And I'm so happy that I let myself fall in love for that very first time. <laughs>